Okay, so I'm recording this after I already finished the main part of the video, so you'll see that in a second, but I wanted to put this up front because it's pretty cool. So Ben on Twitter made a post about how you can actually now back tap on the iPhone and iOS 14 and do certain actions. So let me show you how to enable it. So you go into settings um, and then accessibility, and then go down to touch and then go down to back tap. And then now you can choose between double or triple tap. And now you can have them do certain amount of things here. So you can see you have a bunch of different things, uh, but I have it set to open up control center and to take a screenshot. So let's go back to Twitter here. And now I'm gonna do a double tap to bring down the control center. Works and I can do a double tap again to put it away. And then also I can do a triple tap to do a screenshot. So much easier than holding the buttons together. So that's cool. Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Knows Best here. So I had the first beta for iOS 14 running on my iPhone 11 Pro Max here. And yes, this is my main iPhone, so I'm taking a little bit of a chance putting a beta on it, but hey, I'm a risk taker. So anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the new features and you can see one of the major first ones here, and this is a widget. Yes, a widget on iOS. So officially, widget support is here. So this is the weather widget and I can just tap on it and it will open up the app. Um, or if I wanted to add more widgets to my home screen, I can swipe over to the left and this is the today screen, which basically acts as a widget hub now for the most part. And so now I can scroll through and just go through some of the other widgets that I have right here. And then if I wanted to add one of these, say the stock widget to my home screen, I can just tap and hold for a little bit and then I can swipe over and boom, drop it down just like that. And there you have it. And of course I can tap on that and that will open up that particular app. And then also if I tap and hold, it will bring up this little plus button at the top left hand corner, fail. Uh, if I tap and hold just like this, it'll pull up that plus button at the top left hand corner right there. And now when I tap into that, I can now browse some of the other widgets on my phone. And so here are some of those widgets. And right now we just have widgets for Apple apps. So the official apps that come on your iPhone. And if I wanted to add one for batteries, I can just tap on it. And for most of these widgets, you do have multiple sizes you can choose from. So I can go from small to medium to large like that, but I'm gonna go with a small one, hit the plus button and boom, it drops on my home screen. And I can rearrange this if I wanted to, I can add it to another screen just by sliding over to the next one. And I'm just gonna leave this uh, right here for now. And so also when I go back to my widgets, you can now see an option for something new called Smart Stack. And it's basically stacks up a few of your widgets in one single spot on your screen. And so now this will allow the system itself to actually rotate through some of those widgets throughout the day. So maybe in the morning time when you're driving to work, it'll have the map widget up and show you the traffic information. And then later on in the day, maybe it'll show you the weather or something like that. And so you can see here, it just switched between one. So that's the widget right here at the top. So I added this to my screen and it just randomly switched to one for the news. And if I tap and hold on this, I can actually remove this news widget out of this stack or I can go into the edit stack option and then now I can rotate some of these widgets and kind of rearrange them just like so. Or if I don't need one of these, like I have two news for some reason, I can just go ahead and swipe and delete it. And then I can also turn off this smart rotate feature. Now iOS 14 is also bringing picture in picture support to the iPhone. So now if you're playing a video and you simply swipe up from the bottom to go back home, the video will still play on your home screen and you can move it around and resize it if you want. Then you can also swipe it to the side of the screen and the audio will keep playing. But of course you won't see the video, but then when you wanna see it, just tap that arrow and it will pop back. And so for right now, it looks like it's just working with Apple video apps, but hopefully down the line, Netflix and YouTube and other video apps will be able to do the same thing. And something else new to the home screen this year is called an app library. And to get to it, you just have to swipe all the way over to the right hand side of the screen. Um, or you can also just use the dots right above the dock to do a quick little swipe as you can see. And then once you get to the end, just swipe one more time and then boom, there you go. And so this screen basically organizes your apps into certain categories automatically. So you have productivity, you have creativity, entertainment. And so when you do uh, tap on one of the bigger icons, it will open up that app. But if you do tap on the little group of four icons, it will open up um, all of the other apps that are in this particular folder that you can't see. So it is definitely going to be a good way to keep everything organized on your home screen. Okay, so now with iMessage, Apple is giving you more control. So say you like to have certain conversations all the time with certain people, you can now pin that particular thread with that person just by swiping over, tapping over the pin. And then now when you go into the app, you'll have a contact picture of them at the top. And also it'll show a little bit of notification bubbles when they do actually respond to that particular chat. So this is an easy way to kind of make your favorite chats more visible. And then also within group messages, you can now set it up to only receive notifications when people directly reply to you. 
So in a group chat, if someone types your name and then a message, now you'll get that notification saying that they responded to you instead of just getting a whole bunch of group notifications that can always be annoying. And then now you also have inline replies. So now you can take that particular message in a thread and respond to that and people can kind of keep track with that particular part of the conversation. Now Siri is also cool again in some ways. So instead of taking up the entire screen when it gives you information, you will now just get a notification at the top and then you can interact with it later. And then also there's a new animation. So let's just go ahead and check that out. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? It's currently cloudy and 82 degrees in St. Louis. All right, and then now I can just tap on that notification and boom, and it opens up the weather app and let's see what else it can do. Hey Siri, who wrote the Hamilton play? Here's what I found from vividseats.com. Lin-Manuel Miranda is credited as okay. the Boom, there you go. Now something else as far as the notifications at the top of the screen now, that also happens when you get an incoming phone call. So instead of just taking up your entire screen, it's a notification at the top. And if you swipe it away, it will just go ahead and deny the call or you can tap into it and then now activate that phone conversation. So those things are just a long time coming and I'm happy that they're in iOS now. Now, Apple has also added a new stock app called Translate, and this will be able to work offline and it takes advantage of the neural engine. So you'll be able to get some really good translation without having to have any type of connection to the internet. So let's go ahead and open that up and let's ask it a question. Where was Michael Jordan born? And you can hit play. Donde nació Michael Jordan? There you go. And so from here, you can also tap on a word and get a definition for it if you need to. And then also too, you can switch between uh, multiple languages here, as you can see, it has a good amount of them. And it shows you which ones are available offline right here. So it's pretty cool. Translation. Google has had it for a while, yes, but Apple now has it. Now the Maps app is also getting updated. I couldn't find some of the changes in this particular app. Maybe it's coming in a future update, but I'll show you anyway. Um, so if you are a cyclist and you use the Maps app to be able to plan your route, it will now show you if you have like stairs on your route. So when you need to pick up your bike and walk up the stairs. And then also too, if you are driving an electric vehicle, you can now plan your route and it'll actually find the charging stations that work with your particular model of car. And speaking of cars, there are some new things with CarPlay, like new wallpapers and things. But the one cool thing is that now you can use Use your iPhone to unlock your car. Now this is only going to work with certain cars out the gate, but Apple is trying to get this on a lot of cars to be able to work via NFC and then eventually the U1 chip. And so this now allows you to just use your iPhone to unlock your car. And then also if you wanted to give other people access to drive your car, you can also assign them digital keys that they can use on their phone. And you can also limit that access so maybe they can only drive for a certain amount of time and things like that. Um, or you can just give them full access to your car. And Memoji has also gotten a little better. So you have some more age options. So if you want to go a little bit older, you can. And then also if you swipe all the way over to the right, you have some more headgear options, I think around 20 or so. Um, I don't know which ones are all new or whether all of these are new. I'm not sure. I don't use it that often. Um, but one thing that is new is that you can also add a face covering on here. So you can add a face and you see that it is moving when I do talk. So that's cool. And you can also change the color like so. And moving over to Safari, we do see that option for translation that I showed you before in that new app. Now that is also in Safari. So if I do go to Telemundo and I don't speak Spanish, but if I wanna know what the website is saying, I can hit the button there on the left-hand side and hit translate to English and boom, now I can read it without looking stupid. And also in this same menu, you do have an option to see a tracking report. So it can kind of let you know um, how different websites are tracking you and some things that Safari has prevented from happening. So this is really good. Now this next feature is just something that really makes sense and I never thought about, but it's called App Clips. And so this allows you to, for example, if you're walking on the street and you come across one of those electric scooters that you can rent, but you don't have the app already on your phone, instead of having to go to the app store and download it and log in and all of that stuff, you can now just hold your iPhone over to it and then it'll pop up on the bottom of your screen and then tell you that you can download the app clip for it. And then now it would download like a small 10 megabyte file. So it's not the entire app, just what you need from the app to be able to do what you're trying to do. And then now you can use something like sign in with Apple ID and then now boom, you can get on that scooter and start riding away. So it's a very fast process and it doesn't take that much time. And you can do this at, in you know, a lot of different places like a coffee shop and other places that will allow you to do this if you don't have the app already on your phone. So yeah, something I never thought about, but I think I will be using a lot.
Now there are some new privacy features, but the main one that stood out to me is that when an app is using your microphone or your camera, there's a little indicator light that pops up on the top right hand corner of your screen. So if I go to a message and I was doing this earlier and I messed up, but anyway, if I go to the message and type on the microphone there, um, it will actually have a little orange light there at the top right hand corner. And this is really, really useful, especially if you're concerned just about privacy. Um, and then also too, when I go into the camera app, I think when the, uh, when the camera is activated, it turns green and then if it's just the microphone, it turns orange. I'm assuming that's what's going on here. So yeah, something really useful to let you know what's going on on your phone at all times. Now I did miss this a little bit earlier, but in the weather app, it looks like they have some changes and Apple acquired a weather app called Dark Sky a little while ago. And that was one of my favorite weather apps, but it looks like now in the stock app, you do have more information when it comes to precipitation. Um, so now you can kind of see what it's going to be like for the next hour. And then when you scroll down, you get some more information about air quality. So I don't spend that much time in the weather app, but it looks like those two things are new and maybe some other stuff, but we'll see the more I use it. And so that's all of the major features in iOS 14, at least as far as what I know so far. But Apple has a bunch of little changes too inside of iOS that I went to the website and I was able to kind of just scroll through. So let me go through some of those real quick. Um, so one thing is with Siri, it will now be able to access web answers for information and also send audio messages. Um, then also too with the home app, you can now access facial recognition when it comes to using something like a video doorbell. And then also with TV OS, you can also have a pop-up on your screen when somebody's at your video doorbell and it'll pop up on the screen while you're watching TV or something. And this next thing is something that I wasn't thinking about, but what happens when your iPhone dies and you're using it as your car key? Um, but Apple has set it up so your iPhone will be able to work up to five hours after your battery dies out for CarPlay, which definitely is going to be a good thing. And then with the AirPods and the AirPods Pros, you now have the ability to have automatic switching. So if you are using them to listen to music on your iPhone, and then you switch over to watching a movie on your iPad, they'll automatically switch over. And then also with the AirPods Pros, you will be getting spatial audio, and it will be able to also track the movement of your head and also the device that you're using to be able to make sure you're getting that really good surrounding sound. Um, and also you will be getting some battery notifications at the top for your AirPods. AirPods now. And oh, I missed this. So this is audio sharing for the Apple TV 4K. So now you can connect two sets of AirPods to that device. And now you'll be able to listen to them and not bother anyone sleeping in the room. And what else do we have here? So the camera app is saying that you will be able to take photos faster. Um, and then also too, they will have this new exposure compensation control. So you can lock in an exposure value while separately locking in camera focus for a specific shot. So that's good. We've seen that on some Android phones, but you now will be able to get that. And the new health app will be able to track your sleep a little bit better, but if you want more sleep tracking, you're gonna wanna get that new watch OS update for the Apple Watch, which can track your breathing and other stuff. And then the final major thing is the fact that now you can set a default email and browser app. So now if you wanna use Firefox or Google Chrome as your default browser, you can do that, or you can set the Gmail application to be your default email application. So these are definitely necessary changes that I like to see. So yeah, this is iOS 14. I'm liking it so far, but there will be updates coming out and more betas and stuff like that. So I'll make some other videos as more things start to get uncovered. But what do you think about iOS 14? Leave your comment down below and like always, guys. I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.